Most of the world has been practicing social distancing for over a month now, and many of us are finding it challenging to live with the restrictions that isolation has placed on our lives. A quarter of the world's population is now living under some form of lockdown. The big question that keeps coming up is, how do we do life in isolation? How do we socialize if the only people we have access to is our family? How do we eat if we can't go buy groceries from the grocery store? What do we do for adventure and excitement if we can't travel? In the middle of the South Pacific, between northern Vanuatu and the Solomon Islands, there is a group of people who literally live in this level of isolation. And they do it without the one thing that a lot of people would say is keeping us sane right now. They do it without the internet. This place is probably one of the remotest places I've ever been to in my entire life. Almost all of these people have lived in an isolated island community for their entire lives. There are no grocery stores to buy food at, no restaurants to eat at, no dance clubs to go socialize and dance at, and no transportation infrastructure to facilitate any type of travel. Yet, these are among the most happy and content people that I've ever encountered. Why? Before I get into that, let's start with a little background on how I ended up in one of the most isolated communities in the entire world in the middle of the South Pacific. My name is Chris, and this is Sayo, Mia, and Aya. We spent the last three years sailing around the world together on our boat. Sailing for me is a vehicle for travel. It provides me with the opportunity to get to places and connect with people that are off the beaten track. My mission with this channel is to open a window and provide you with a lens into the lives of these people, places, and their history. I absolutely love learning about people and about what makes a place a place. I also love telling stories and going on good old-fashioned adventures. My hope is that you learn something from my videos. Something that in some small way perhaps helps you become a better version of the person you already are. So buckle up, subscribe to my channel, and let's go off the beaten track. I've been sailing with my family on our catamaran, Family Circus, for over three years now in the South Pacific. This year, we decided we wanted to go somewhere different. So we decided to head north from Vanuatu and into the Southern Solomon Islands. For those of you who aren't familiar with this part of the world or have never even heard of the Solomon Islands, the history of this country is a fascinating one. We interrupt this broadcast for a daily news update. In the Pacific, United States Marines have landed on the island of Guadalcanal in the Solomon Islands. And one that I will cover in more detail in later episodes. When we left Sola in Vanuatu, we left cell coverage. Along with that, with the exception of an emergency, our connection with the rest of the world was cut. We were on our own, isolated from everyone, except for Zigzag, the boat we were traveling with, and the remote communities we found to stop at along the way. It is night here in what we call the Twin Waterfall Anchorage, north of Sola in the Banks Group in Vanuatu. Just over that way to the north of us, is another massively huge waterfall cascading that we, we stopped there the other day. We are off to go explore a waterfall. There's probably a big pool up there. Look, it's blowing the trees inside. Oh yeah, we can maybe pull it up in there, although there's a big rock. Okay, it's a bit of a dodgy dinghy anchorage here. A little bouldery and rocky. Me and Sayo, I dropped them on shore and now how deep is it? It's not so deep. It's okay. Go so way steep. In we go. Now we're trying to see if there's a path up to the waterfall. 
This is where it comes out right here, which looks neat. While we were exploring that, a guy dropped by named Philip, and uh, we've been hanging out with him for the last day and a half. It's been super fun. Mia, where are we going? To a different waterfall. To a different waterfall? Yeah. You excited? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna go swimming there. We're gonna go swimming there, I hope so. This is Pindolin. She lives right behind the waterfall and she is guiding us. And tonight I am going for the very first time night lobster hunting. And I'm gonna go out with Philip and I think his wife Chelsea is gonna come too. Uh, they're the local villagers here in this village. He lives just in the corner behind me. There's very few people here in these villages in the Banks group. Just from this village to get to Sola, which is the closest sort of civilization, I guess you could call it, not really. Uh, it takes seven hours to get there. And Sola is maybe a thousand, two thousand people. This is the result of Philip, mine, and Stanley's night expedition <laughs> on the reef. And then we also got these freshwater prawns, which just look like a normal prawn, except they have these crazy arms dangling off them. Crazy arms. Be kind of cool to see what they do with them when they're alive. They twiddle their thumbs. Yeah. You think they what? They twiddle their thumbs. I think they you pretty much do the same thing you do with normal shrimps, prawns that we get in ah! Vancouver. <laughs> so yeah, here we're gonna have them for dinner. It should be yummy. From Northern Vanuatu to Nendo in the Solomon Islands is approximately 200 miles. Along the way, there are dozens of small isolated communities to visit that are mostly only reachable by boat. We had approximately two months to cover this distance. And so rather than stopping at every community along the way, we picked three communities where we could spend a little more time and get to know the people and their culture. We're just sitting out here in the Solomon Islands, looking at this gorgeous, gorgeous place. And look at the people with their little boats just heading home from being out in the outer reef. And we can see manta rays, fins every now and then because they're swimming around just out here between us and the reef. Out of these three places, two of them, Twin Waterfall Bay in Vanuatu and Asuebo Village in Utapua. I've taken the top two spots for my absolute favorite places I've been over the last three years. This is all the kids in the village, I think. Is this all the kids in the village? Every single little kid. He's walking with us. These places are arguably the most remote and isolated communities in the entire South Pacific. In the case of Utapua, the only way to get there if you don't have your own yacht is to take an 8 to 12 hour long boat ride in a 21 foot open boat across the open ocean. Despite their isolation, or perhaps because of it, I found that there is a lot that we can learn from these people particularly today. The foundation of these communities is built on the social principle of the tribe. Within these communities, absolutely everyone belongs to a tribe. The tribes are small, never more than 150 people, and more often between 75 and 100 people. Each tribe has its own leader, the chief, and the head of the community is the chief of chiefs. We want to revive or encourage young people to go back to the basic way of life how we, our ancestors uh, lived before, and that is to revive our culture. The tribal structure is a critical component to the stability 
and peace of the community as well as that of the individuals that comprise the tribe. This we live now by the goodness of our old people, yeah? the wisdom of the old people. The members of the tribe are like a big family. The tribe is their social support structure. If someone needs financial help, it's provided by the tribe. If they don't have enough food to eat, it's provided by the tribe. I have a feeling that my people needs me. In the time I spent with these people, learning about them and getting to know them, the thing that impacted me the most was not seeing how they live, but learning their perspective on life. Because of their isolation from the world and lack of material things, these people live very simple lives. Simple lives, but I love that. We live simple, we enjoy what is available, we don't need to go for something outside. We just walk in the gardens with fish where everything is free. Yet, because of their connection with their tribe and their willingness to help others, they lead very fulfilling lives. Because in order to lead, you must learn to be, you learn to save them, not you to be saved, but you learn to save them. I learned that because of this, their happiness comes from somewhere much stronger and much deeper than the superficial happiness we in the modern world get when we buy a new car, get a new toaster, or buy a new computer. Their happiness comes from the shared sense of purpose and community they get from contributing to each other and to their tribe. They're a part of something bigger than themselves. What made these people so special to me was their willingness to adopt us into their tribe, their family. And they were open to me contributing what I could to the betterment of their tribe. This story is a positive one, and I believe it's one worth sharing. It shows us how even in situations of forced isolation, finding a willingness to open ourselves up to each other and contributing to a sense of community and togetherness, something greater than ourselves, helps shift our perspective away from the negativity, depression, and loneliness that many of us find ourselves trapped in in isolation today. Thanks for watching this episode. If it resonated with you, please share it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest episode coming out next week.